Now, one of the nice things about Flutterflow is that you have complete control how you can build the app. You have all the visual elements, you have access to logic, actions, and you also have access to a database. So you can build an entire app without really coding anything. You can essentially build whatever you want using the templates, uh, the components, stuff like that, without actually diving into code. But what if you want something extra? What if you want to go a little bit further? What if you want to customize your app in a lot of interesting ways? This is actually something that I wanted to do for a while now. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually customize a component or an app or pretty much anything uh, as far as you want. And after this video, you will realize that there are really no limits as to what kind of apps that you can build. You can build simple apps, you can build more complicated apps, and you can build pretty much anything in between. So let me show you what I mean. So here I am in Flutterflow. I have a blank app. I don't have anything here. And let's say I want to, you know, build some kind of a podcasting app, some kind of an audio player, a music player. You know, we all listen to podcasts. And, you know, podcasting apps are kind of cool, actually, okay? And uh, maybe I want to build a new podcasting app or I want to make some kind of a music app, something like that. So if we go into column here, we can add a widget. So we can just search for audio and we have an audio player, okay? So if I can click on it, uh, I have the audio player right here and this is a, a built-in widget. This is a widget provided to us by Flutterflow, which is nice. And if we choose this widget, we can specify the path. So you can specify that from an action, you can specify it from a variable. You can also have a title right here, you know, to the, uh, to the music that you're playing, to the track, to the specific uh, MP3 file or whatever. And, you know, you can get it from a network, from an asset. That's all very nice. And what this all means is that it's customizable, right? You can set it from a variable. That means you can set it anywhere, okay? It's totally customizable. And, you know, if I run this, it looks actually pretty nice, okay? So here I'm going to create a test environment real quick. And by the way, while we are waiting, I just want to let you know that you will be able to download and view the app that I'm about to build from my Patreon page. And so you can download all the previous Flutterflow apps as well as get access to live streams and stuff like that. So that is a good place to be if you are interested in taking your no-code uh, knowledge to the next level. Okay, so here we are. We have the text, uh, test environment here. All right, so we can play it here. And I can assure you that it is definitely playing. You may not hear it completely, but it is definitely playing. And we also have a progress bar. So this is a really nice widget. But the problem is this is the only widget, right? What if you want to create something custom? You want to create something interesting. What I wanted to create is something like a music visualizer or an audio visualizer. So I'm sure you have seen those things before. They're pretty much everywhere where you have audio. Uh, if you're using like a text uh, messaging app like WhatsApp and somebody leaves you a voice message or even iMessage, you're going to have a little kind of uh, music uh, audio visualizer in there. This is very, very common. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to see if I can create my own uh, audio player with a music visualizer and some extra features as I'm, I'm about to show you. And so we're going to go back to the app. We're going to delete this right here because we're going to go ahead and build our own uh, interesting, customizable, uh, new and exciting kind of music player, okay? And so the first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to see if there's some code available that already does what we want, okay? Do I need to start from scratch or is there some open source code available? So I searched around and I found this uh, music button animation, okay? And so this is kind of what you have. And uh, there's actually source code to it, okay? And so you can actually download it. So I can, I can scroll down and I can actually get the source code. This is actually all the source code, right? This is a special widget called uh, play button state, okay? And it essentially, um, once you play, this is kind of what it looks like. It, it creates a music visualizer, okay? And so what I went ahead is I created a custom widget that does exactly that. So if we come to custom widgets, I have my custom widget here, okay? Uh, a special widget that animates uh, a bunch of shapes in there, okay? And so if we preview this widget, widget, this is kind of what it looks like. It has a play button and it has a pause button. These, these are both um, 
customizable, okay? These are both parameters, and so is the width and the height, okay? And so if I play it, this is kind of what it does, okay? And you can customize the colors. Uh, it's all there, right? You can customize the colors. You can customize how big it is. And that is the beginning of it all, right? You can also customize the size, right? How much it extends over. You can make this widget smaller if you want, maybe something like this. And if you play it, okay, as you can see, it has a bounding thing. But I think a good size would be about, you know, something like this, okay? So something like this. And uh, now it's perfect. Let me show you how this is used. So if I come in here and let's say I go to a column, I can go to my custom widget and I can play that first widget. Look at this, it's right here. And I can make it, let's say, height 400, 400. And I wanna say, I wanna you know, create a play icon. We have a play icon, 90 pixels, and then a pause icon, right? All of this is customizable in case you want to customize it. And now we have it here. And so if I refresh this uh, test environment, you're gonna see it right here. Okay, so there you have it. So now I can play it and look at that. It's, it's a nice, very simple, but still very nice kind of an audio visualizer, music visualizer. Not, and you have to admit that's a lot nicer than the kind of the stock, the stock widget that, that's uh, provided with Flutterflow. So we're gonna pause that. And the next thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to obviously implement the audio functionality, right? Because what's the point of a audio visualizer if it's not you know, playing any audio, okay? And in order to do that, I needed to find a plugin or a little widget that already provides that functionality, okay, without building it from scratch. And that widget exists. It's called Just Audio. And this is actually uh, one of many. If you go to pub.dev, this is where you get all these widgets. Um, it's actually, you know, there's lots of them, but this is kind of the main one. This has a 99% popularity, over 2,000 likes, et cetera, et cetera. And this is really powerful. First of all, it's very, very powerful. It can do lots of things. Second of all, it's actually very easy to use. Okay, you have this audio player, you give it a URL, you say play, you say pause, you can seek it, you can sp set speed, volume, stop, etc, etc. Very, very simple. And so I went ahead, I went back to my app, and I went ahead and I created this new custom widget. And by the way, like I said, you will be able to view and clone this entire app with all the widgets from my Patreon page, okay? And so if you're still not a member, definitely join. There's a lot of content, a lot of interesting things, access to live streams, uh, Q&As, um, lots and lots of extra content. And if, and if you want to take your no-code knowledge to the next level, it's a no-brainer, okay? You're going to get a lot of extra content there. And so here we have this widget here, and I'm going to explain to you exactly what it does, right? What we have here is a parameter, okay? We have these first, we have the width and height, which is actually provided. So if you click here, you will see that it, it, that it provides width and height, okay? That's, that's a must, right? Because you need to control the widget. These two parameters are the icons, okay? So the play icon and the pause icon, okay? If you wanna change them, you, wanna, you have some custom icon somewhere, you can do that as well. Next, we have the audio URL. This is where you specify the URL from your app. Okay, and so this is this audio URL right here. This is audio URL, and we are only doing a couple of things, okay? Look, check this out. We are creating this audio player, right? We have a dependency here because this is an extra library, and so the way you, you, uh, you can do it is you can come here and click on this. This is gonna give you this dependency. You come back here, and you paste it in here. Say add dependency, and you paste it in there. Very, very simple. See, I can paste it right now, and there it is. Now, what do we have? Now we have this audio player, and do not worry too much about uh, the, the errors, right? Because we, are, we have a dependency, and it, this, this editor doesn't know about this dependency, so do not, do not worry about it. It's gonna compile just fine. And so what we're doing is we're setting this URL. We're saying set URL widget.audio URL, which is this parameter that we're sending. Next, we are checking if it's playing, we're gonna stop. If it's not playing, we want it to play, okay? And so the initial state is not to do anything. And then we, when we press the button, uh, this, is, this is this untoggle thing, right? Which is this thing right here, which is what happens when you play, uh, press the button. And that's pretty much it. That's all we are doing. We're basically uh, passing in the URL right here. We're saying, we're giving it the audio URL. And here we're just toggling, okay? We press the button, it, uh, it plays it. If, if we pause it, it stops it. That's it. 
And so now if we come in here, we can actually preview. We can say preview. And it's the same thing except we have the audio URL. Okay. And so let's go ahead and give it the same uh, file that's used for, um, for the testing for uh, the default widget. So if we go to the default widget, let's save it. Let's go back to the thing. And if we go to the default widget, right? This audio thing here, audio widget, audio player, it has the sample file. So I'm going to use that sample file and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add our new widget, right? So I'm going to come in here. This is the second widget here. Widget two, we're going to give it width 400, height 400. Play icon is going to be play. Okay, and that's all customizable. This is all part of the app. Pause is here. We're going to give icon size 90, 90 for the other one. You can also specify the color. And now we have the audio URL. And so I'm going to paste this one here. Okay. And so let's go ahead and uh, refresh our test environment. And hopefully it's going to play now. And hopefully you'll be able to hear it as well. All right. So here's the, uh, the new app. This is the widget that includes the audio playing capability. It's not only playing, but it also has the, the visualizer. Look at that. How nice is that? And all of that you can control from your screen, from the widget configuration. But that's not all. I wanted to go further. I wanted to put a progress bar over there, but not just any progress bar, something unique, something interesting, something that fits in here. And so what I did is I, I Googled around, I searched around and I found this. And so here we are on back on pop dev. This is where we got um, the audio functionality and pretty much we get a lot of things here. And this package is called sync fusion flutter gauges. Okay. This is a flutter gauges library includes a data visualization widgets, linear gauge and radial gauge. Okay. Circular gauge to create modern interactive animated gauges. And it has a 98% uh, popularity, which means it's fairly popular, 674 likes. And so look at this. Look at you can you can create all of these really, really nice gauges. Look how beautiful it is. And so look at this. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted something unique. I wanted to create a circular gauge, okay? A radial gauge, something like this, something, something like this. Lots of things that you can do. Look at this one. I wanted to create something maybe like this. Okay. And so let me show you what I got and then let me show you how I did it. Okay. So if we go back to the app, I, we're going to delete the second widget and I actually have a third widget. Okay. So this third widget includes the visualization. It includes the music, the audio capability, and also includes the progress bar. Okay. So let me show you how that works. We're going to preview this widget. And this is the progress bar. Okay. So this is the initial state. Okay. It's black. You know, I'm not a designer. I'm not like somebody who knows which colors to pick. Okay. So, so definitely excuse me for that. But once it starts uh, playing, it's going to change the colors and it's also going to display the visualization. Okay. So everything is configured. We have our file here that the standard file now check this out. And so now if we hit play, Look at that. It visualizes it, but now you have the progress bar moving. Look at that. It's moving. So it's a little blue color, which means that it's moving. Okay. And when it gets here, that's it. That's 100%. Now look at that. It's moving. It's moving up. It's moving up. And not only do we have the visualizer, we have music capability, but we also have a progress bar. Look at that. It's almost 50%. It's like 40% through. And all of that is super customized. Okay. So we're going to hit save. We're going to exit. And obviously we can use it inside our apps as well. We can just go to column, go to the to our widget, pick audio widget number three, let's say 400, 400. Let's set up our play icon, play icon, 90, play I, a pause icon, 90 as well. Let's give it the audio URL. If you do not give a URL, it's just not going to play anything. Okay. Let's go ahead and create a test environment for this. All right. And there we have it. There's our app. We can play it. And it's also playing the music, I can definitely assure you. And look at that. And we have this uh, progress bar there moving around and a little visualization, a little animations. Obviously, you can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. Uh, you can customize the colors. All of that, all of that is easily customizable. And that's kind of what we have. And now we have something that's at least starting or almost resembles a a nice kind of audio audio player. Okay, so how exactly does this work? Well, if we go to our 
custom function, okay, and I know this is code, but this is, I assure you, this is low code. This is, <laughs> we're not building a, a brand new app from scratch. This is actually very, very minor code, okay? So if we go to our last app, and so we have the Sync Fusion. This is Sync Fusion right here. We have just audio. We have just audio. We have. We also have a helper here. This is important for displaying uh, the progress there. And if we scroll down, we have something called an FLSF radial gauge. Okay. And so it has two axes. This is the the primary radial axis, and this is the secondary radial axis. Okay. And so you need two radial axes to show you that one is kind of the initial state, and then one comes over it after it starts moving just to show you obviously you can have one that just shows you the, the progress bar it's up to you how far you want to take it but the most important thing here is that it has a progress bar right so it has a value which is the position divided by the duration okay multiplied by 100 because it needs it in percentage right and so we have the current position that we're playing uh, divided by the duration the entire duration of the music so if it's like 50 position divided by 100, you know, multiplied by 100, then you get 50, right? You get 50%. That is the percentage. And this is really the main widget. This is the main widget that kind of displays everything. There's, there's a lot of other kind of library stuff that came in with the thing. And if you come in here, you go to uh, example, you can see how it's done, right? This is, that's all I did. I basically, I basically took one of these examples here and I, and I implemented it. Very, very simple. And as a result, we have a widget. This is the final version. And we have a bunch of parameters, okay? We have width and height. We have the play icon. We have the pause icon. We have the audio URL so that you can specify it. And that way, when you're actually using this widget, right? So if we come in here, and this is this widget here, you can specify all the parameters, okay? You can specify all the parameters I hear that you want. And as a result, you have a nice widget that more or less resembles a you know a, a t the type of widget you will have in kind of more professional apps as opposed to that simple audio player with just the um the the status bar there the progress bar there and all that you now you have something a little bit more advanced and so the purpose of this video is to show you how far you can go with flutterflow and so one thing to realize is that we're not building a brand new app we're not creating something from scratch. I basically took an afternoon and I decided to, to see how far I can go, to see if I can have visualization, to see if I can create a progress bar. And that's all it was. And you know, if you were to code this from scratch, it would take a very, very long time. And so this is a perfect example of taking what Flutterflow gives you and going a little bit further and creating a nice uh, kind of nice uh, component, nice visualization, nice um, you know, kind of the progress bar, nice, nice effects and stuff like that. And so you can easily do that. You can go further. You can take it as far as you want. You just have to, um, you know, learn how you can actually take it the next level. This is what Flutterflow is. And so, like I said, in the beginning of the video, you can build apps that are relatively simple, straightforward, or if you want to go the extra mile, you want to separate yourself from the pack, you want to build something interesting, you can do that as well without going crazy and, you know, spending the next several months coding from scratch. You have all the tools at your disposal and it's not very, very complicated and it's not very, very hard to actually do something unique and something different. And, and so just a quick reminder, you will be able to view and clone this specific app, including all the previous apps, as well as get access to live streams. I have a Q&A coming up on October 1st where I'm going to be answering all the questions that I've gotten uh, in public and private on the Patreon page everywhere. I'm going to go deep. We're going to go deep. We're going to try to answer all the questions that I can and really give you a, a very kind of deep and, uh, you know, kind of go the extra mile and tell you how you can solve that specific problem. So if that interests you, definitely join the Patreon page, support the channel, support my work and, that, and get access to all of these amazing apps that you can customize and build into something bigger, into something more interesting. So I really hope you've gotten value here in this video. If you did, leave a comment, smash a like, and I'll see you in a future video.